everyone. Welcome to Ake Harbor's program on natural dyes. Um, today we're going to be looking at using natural dyes to dye materials that you might have at your house. And I'm going to start with a PowerPoint that I'm going to share with you. All right. And so um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, why I'm into natural dyes and um, get started. I took a class about, I just want to make sure everyone's hearing me okay. If you're not, thumbs down. Everyone's hearing me okay? You're not getting any reverb? No. No, okay. So um, I took a class uh, probably a year and a half ago on natural dyes and I liked it so much. We did a class last year, just about at this time uh, here at the Crest. And so we decided, whoa, it, it was such a, it was probably our best class ever. And we hated to not be able to do it again. So we we're doing it virtually. And so today, Hold on, it's not. Oh boy. All right, are you seeing my screen everyone? Jess, yeah, okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so today we're just, we're gonna talk about um, natural dyes, and I'm going to refer to a lot of books because um, there's a lot written about natural dyes. And are you seeing me along with the um, yes. book? Good. So um, natural dyes are really beautiful. They're subtle colors. Um, they're not bright like uh, you would see in commercial colors. They're just so, real subtle and um, they go great uh, with lots of um, clothing and I'm going to be showing you what I made with these. Um, they're just a real nice color. I have here this book, A Garden to Die For. You're welcome to check it out. But um, it has um, in here lots of different colors that you can make. And this morning I made avocados. I made a beautiful pink with avocado, which I will show you in a little bit um, what it looks like. But this book, A Garden to Die For, has lots of great information about simple dyes that you can make uh, with things that ha you have at home or things that um, the avocado are just the pits and the skins that you would throw away and hey, you can make a nice uh, dye with it. Now I am not an expert on natural dyes. So I, I use a lot of books and I'll be showing you books and I'm going to be showing two videos. And the first video is from an art school and it's a short video and she's gonna go through um, probably the process that you are going to see most often with natural dyes, the boiling of the um, materials and the um, dyeing for several days, dipping it and dyeing for several days. So I'm gonna click onto this video and this will give us an introduction. The natural dyeing of textiles is an extremely easy and accessible way to transform that boring white tea. Okay. All right, I'm going to share the screen with the movie here. Okay. All this tech. Are you seeing it now? Yeah, All yeah. right. Oh, no, the wrong Hello, one. Hello, everyone. Not Welcome her. to my channel. I'm Jennifer. <laughs> She's this later. The natural dyeing of textiles is an extremely easy and accessible way to transform that boring white tea into a landscape of vibrant natural Oops. There are tons of household items you can use in the process. We recently visited the Brooklyn Textile Art Center to get a demo on how to do it. And we'll also explain some of the basic chemistry that's going on with the process along the way. Sahara 
Sarah Johnson. I am an intern at Textile Art Center in Brooklyn. Um, right now, we're doing a demonstration on natural dyeing. The process of this is taking um, natural things from the earth, like fruits and vegetables, um, different roots, et cetera, et cetera, and taking the color from them and translating them into a fiber. So right here, I have silk that is being wetted. Um, when you are doing natural dyeing, you never want to directly put in a dry fiber into the dye bath. Um, it doesn't translate the color as well. So right here, I'm wetting it. So right here is red cabbage. It's one of my favorite things to dye with. It's really pH sensitive, so it changes color really readily. And right here is cochineal, which is actually not a plant. It's a little bug found on cacti. Yeah, and it's one of the most ancient forms of red. Um, it's really, really vibrant. You'll see in a bit. So. <laughs> With these two natural dyes, red cabbage and cochineal, there's one very big difference in how they work. Cabbage is what is called the substantive dye. It contains a pigment called an anthocyanin, which is water soluble. This means that the pigment molecule can directly bond to a natural fiber on its own. Cochineal, on the other hand, is known as an adjective dye. Adjective dyes require something to stop the dye from washing out of a fiber. Cochineal is an anthraquinone dye, which is a red dye that requires a bonding material called a mordant. The mordanting process is when fibers are treated with a metal salt solution such as aluminum, chromium, copper, iron, or tin salts, creating a lasting bond between the dye and the fiber. The mordant basically allows the dye molecules to lock tightly with the fibers. Sahara, in this case, has used a substance called alum for her mordant in the cochineal dye. This is a substance that's more commonly used in the kitchen for pickling. Say I wanted to get a lavender color rather than like a deep, like royal purple. I wouldn't necessarily leave this in for very long. Um, just put the whole thing in. <laughs> then I'll do the cochineal on this one. I just learned red cabbage is an anthocyanin dye. What's interesting about the color of anthocyanin pigment is that its pH directly affects the range of its color. By introducing an acid to this pigment, anthocyanins will turn red. By introducing a base, it will turn more of a bluish green color. At home, you can add lemon juice to the dye as an acid, or for a base, you can use baking soda. Keep this in mind while dyeing with red cabbage. You actually have a lot of colorful options. Right now, I am taking out my dye matter. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with the color that has been extracted. So um, just taking this out to stop that process from happening. So now I've strained out the cabbage from the dye bath. Um, there will be no more extraction happening. And now I'm going to add my fiber. I think we're about good with this. I'm pretty content with this pink and this lavender. So I'm gonna take it out of the dye bath and I'm going to rinse it with water and pH neutral soap. It's very important to remember that when rinsing your fiber of excess dye, you have to use pH neutral soap. Such soaps are very common and can be found at virtually every grocery store. Pro tip, most pH neutral soaps are completely clear. If your soap is not neutral, you will in fact alter the color of your fiber. Here is my lovely lavender silk. Fun stuff. <laughs> and then we'll take out the coach nail. And yeah. It's very spotted, but I like it. <laughs> I think it's really beautiful. Now that you know the basics of natural dyes, you can try it out at home with tons of different natural products. One last thing to remember about these dyes is that they do change color over time and can slowly fade or go through slight variations in color. If you aren't happy with the color, you can always just go back in and dye it again. Also, you can try mixing dyes to produce a huge range of different colors. So this is a really, really easy process to do and that I encourage you all to try at home. A lot of household items like we did the turmeric and the red cabbage can be found at your local grocery store anywhere. So yeah. Everything is really accessible and definitely get to it. All right. Um, trying to stop share.
right, I'm, I'm going to close up this. Yet. Sorry, I'm got a little I've lost my uh, keynote there. Still lost it. Oh, geez. Okay, that was scary. Uh, there, are you seeing? Um, yep. All right. Okay, best practices. Uh, when um, she she talked about a couple of things that are really important, and I'm going to oops, uh, go back here. First, move us out of the way here. There. All right, best practices. So um, work in a well ventilated area because some of these products, especially the cabbage, are going to have an intense smell when you start to boil them. And then uh, label your fabric uh, with the mordant and the date. So um, if you're going to just keep the dye for later, make sure you, you put down the date that you did it and what you use for your mordant. So if you use uh, vinegar or just um, you put in lemon, some salt, just make sure you uh, do that. If you're gonna be doing this a lot, you probably wanna start keeping a diary with swatches and writing um, dates and what you used, uh, what was your mordant, what fabric. I, I would not use anything that wasn't natural. Use cotton, use polyester, don't, you, don't use polyester, uh, use silk. And here at the library, um, we have uh, silk to give you to try this. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, always rinse your fabric and always remember you can do, uh, if it's ugly, you can do a do-over. I'm gonna show you a do-over. This is a do-over. What do you think? Pretty nice for a do-over. Can you see that, Jess? Mm -hmm. So um, this was a yellow and had green splotches and it just didn't, just wasn't for me. And so I did it, I did a do-over, um, dyed it again and it's perfect now. So I have this book here, Natural Botanic Dyeing. You're welcome to check this book out. And what's nice in here is it will go through and talk about the different mordants that you can use. And if you use, and we're going to show you, you can use um, besides vinegar, you can add steel copper to it and it's going to change the color. This is onion skins. Here at the library, we have lots of onion skin to give away. So um, we're going to be talking about that as our as we progress pardon me bags and bags bags and bags this is just a small part of it so you're going to be able to get lots of um, ideas and uh, for making your own first project again we all have everything here for you you just need to stop at the library you can pick up a book you can pick up some silk and you can pick up some dye material so um, choosing your plants um, well, we have uh, right here lots of plants for you. Um, one fun plant, we have a lot of outside. I'm glad I picked this a few days ago, sumac bobs. Sumac bobs um, are a beautiful color when they're dyed. And um, right now, this is the best time of year for harvesting sumac bobs uh, for making your uh, your dyes. So um, make sure the plant is um, safe to handle. So when you're going out, uh, leave the anything, you know, make sure you know what you're picking. Uh, and um, the dye color might differ. And we're going to talk about um, how that, you know, different, uh, the yellow skins, uh, of an onion might differ depending on the mordant you use. 
And summer and early fall are the best, best times for harvesting materials for dyes. I have a great book uh, about that and it's called Harvesting Color. And in this book, um, it talks about going out in the different seasons and telling you what colors you can find. So it's talking about fall. I'm just going to show you really quickly. Um, here they have the sumac. They talk about making sure you pick that. Walnuts, black walnuts right now it is a great, uh, great one. And um, so it, this book is great for showing you seasonal colors that you can pick. You can also use um, frozen fruits. Um, I have a lot of cherries in my freezer. I think some of you probably have a lot of cherries too, and they would be a, a very uh, vibrant color. Uh, teas are really good too. Even coffee uh, you can use. Uh, so um, in our uh, books that we have, we'll be showing you um, that. So let me just show you really quick. Um, this morning, I um, boiled up some avocados. And if you can see that, you can't. You can't. Pick it up just Get a little bit closer to your camera. Okay, I'm gonna do this. You can see it. Can you see it now? Oh, oh here. That's okay because I am going to strain it. And hopefully I won't make it too big of a mess here. All right, so this is avocado and it's a pink. So what I do is I take the avocados mm -hmm. and oh. <laughs> sure you don't want to switch to the iPad. We we might switch to the iPad at yeah. this point since I have like this um, little uh... <laughs> I'm gonna step away and put this in the sink. And she's gonna switch over for a second. So, um, but I wanna show you, this is made with the avocado. I think I'm okay now. You're okay? Yeah, okay. this was made with the avocado and this one's finished. Do um, you see, it's kind of a, a dull pink. And I boiled the avocado skins uh, for an hour. And then um, I am going to take this bag, put it in my pan with my pink. There, this is, now we know these cooking shows, how they have, oh, I still have some material in there. And I'm gonna boil this for an hour and let this boil for an hour and then um, let it sit for maybe a day or two, depending on how vibrant I want my pink to be. So that's with avocados. I'm just gonna set that aside. And that's with avocados. I'm just tidying up here. <laughs> um, it's a real easy one to do because I love avocados and I just throw away the pits. And then you could just compost that um, when you're done. So uh, there's lots in, in the books that I have here at the library, you can look at all the different things. I was really surprised by avocado and avocado doesn't need a mordant. It just needs hot water. Sorry, what's a mordant? Mordant is, did I, did we skip that? I think we might've skipped um, the mordant page. Uh-huh, mm. uh-huh, good going Jess. So a mordant is something that helps the fabric um, stay, get connected to um, the color, the dyes get connected to the fabric. It's called the bite. So it could be um, vinegar is what we're using today, but it could be salt, alum uh, that you saw in our video. Uh, all of these are at the grocery store. It could be salt, like berries work best with salt. And um, the only thing today for the um, avocados, we just use plain water. 
Uh, tea leaves and red uh, wine vinegar can also help. Um, and they, they can help fix the dye, but they dull the color. So you can, you can experiment. It's, 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 it's like chemistry all over again. So you can experiment with that. So sorry about it, that uh, good call, Jess. So what do you need for this uh, new hobby that you're going to have? Well, um, you need some fabric. And in that last book, um, that I use this one. Um, it has all different kinds of great projects. No, it wasn't that one, but, oh, here, it's this one. Um, this one, uh, it goes through and, um, oh no, this one is a good one. I'm sorry, I'm jumping through because I'm so excited about my books, but, um, these books will tell you just different products to use, like uh, just cotton cloth, silk cloth. But um, I thought this was great. What's it called? This one is called Fabric Dyeing. They just took a, um, a lampshade, a plain old white lampshade, and dipped the top of it into a dye bath, which I thought was good. So you have to. I mean, if it was polyester, that must have been a cotton mix or something, or linen. Uh, but you can use lots of different things. So what do you need besides silk, cotton, something to dye? Uh, you need some, if you're going to do hot baths, you need uh, a pan that you're going to use just for that because you'll probably ruin it. Um, some plant material and a mordant. So those are the only things that, um, that you need uh, for the, uh, your project. Okay, making the dye. So gather your materials. Uh, we, we did that for you. Again, we've got some sumac bobs. We've, got, we've been saving onion skins. So I have uh, red onion skins and yellow onion skins. Lots of yellow. So you need that. Um, and if you're going to do a hot one in a hot um, in a pot, you need to fill your pot with the materials and enough water, cover it for let it simmer for an hour, turn the heat off, and then uh, get the plant material out, strain the dye at, with a strainer and then add your material with the dye and let it sit. Now you can store it um, in a plastic bag and we're gonna, we're gonna show you one in a little bit how to do it. Um, I, for the avocado pit, since it's just like 24 hours, I just left it in the pan with the top on on the stove, turned off and then I took it out, rinsed it and it's ready to go. So, um, Wild Color is a great book that I have here. And in, in our Wild Color book, it just shows here's the yellow um, onion skin. And with uh, yellow onion skins, you can change the color of yellow onions by what mordant you use, or if you wrap it with a, uh, steel, or if you wrap it with copper. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, later too. So Wild Color is a nice book that you can also check out at the library. I've got enough for everyone. So make sure you pick up a book when you get here. So um, before we, Jess and I make our scarves, would you like to make a scarf, Jess? Sure. Before we make our scarves, I'm gonna show you one last video. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And um, I'm gonna open that up first. Stop it. Hello. All right. Hold on for a second. All right. Okay. There she goes.
everyone, welcome to my channel, I'm Jennifer. In this project, I'm using plants, botanicals, to dye cotton fabric, 100% cotton. Everything is going to be natural. I'm using roses, turmeric, red cabbage, spinach, onion skins, and lots more. And um, my background is in fashion design, so I'm used to working with textile, different texture, different patterns and colors and color fastness. So for color fastness in, in this project, I make two batches. One, I use vinegar as a fixative, and the other one, I use alum. This should not be confused with the man-made aluminum. This is not synthetic. What I'm using is natural. It's a mineral. So do not confuse the, the, um, those. Um, alum can be found in baked goods, in, in some deodorant, some toothpaste, in some water. So it's quite safe. I had one huge surprise and one big disappointment, but I enjoyed this project. I had so much fun. I hope you have fun watching it too. Don't forget to like, comment, and share on my videos and subscribe to my channel, please. Thank you. I'm using two yards of 100% cotton muslin. The total weight is eight ounces. I cut the fabric into eight pieces. I hand rinsed the fabric and squeezed the excess water out. Make eight small bundles of 100% white Mercer cotton yarn. Tie them loosely. Making the fixative. One part white vinegar to four parts water. to a boil and simmer for one hour. Let the fabric sit in the liquid for two to four hours. Simmer for one hour. Drain the liquid, put the liquid back in the pot with the fabric and simmer for another hour. Place the fabric and the liquid in a smaller container, maybe like a jar, and let it sit overnight. for one hour, strain the liquid, put the liquid back in the pot with the fabric and simmer for another hour. And remove from heat. Place the fabric and the liquid in a smaller container, maybe like a jar, and let it sit overnight.
simmer for one hour. Drain the liquid. Put the liquid back in the pot with the fabric and simmer for another hour. And remove some heat. Place the fabric and the liquid in a smaller container, maybe like a jar, and let sit overnight. For all the colors, you will simmer for one hour, drain, put the liquid and the fabric back in the pot, simmer for another hour, put in a smaller container and leave to stand overnight. We're going to finish up with this whole cabbage and then I'm um, going to finish up and uh, we're going to do our own. But do you get, I think you have the idea. She's done it enough times. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Her process is, 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 a, is a good process. And I like how she uses all the different colors. I'm going to get to the end so you can see all of the finished ones. All right. So she switches off um, vinegar and alum. So you can see the two different, uh, how the colors change using vinegar versus alum. See your finished products. So my biggest disappointment was the spinach. I could not get green. I used so much of the spinach and I could not get a green. I think I'll try grass next time for green. My biggest surprise was the onion skin. Oh my goodness, I could not believe the color. It was just as a salmony, peachy color that was soft and just beautiful. So, thanks for watching. Okay, I'm going to stop the share and then Jess, you're going to take the iPad and come on over? Yeah. All right.
Your screen's off and mine is, but. No. Okay. All right. So, oh, you're gonna use my Mac? Okay. All right. I think you might have a microphone covered or something. No one can hear. Oh, you're not hearing my voice? No, we didn't hear that the whole time. Okay, start over. Okay, so I'm starting over. Um, are we muted? No, we're not muted. So everyone hearing me now? Okay, so instead of boiling, we're gonna use vinegar and we're gonna use full strength vinegar. So what I've done is I have put sumac bobs and red onion and I am going to, and I wrote that, I put that I'm using sumac and red onions. I'm doing it today. And I'm going to take the sumac and the red onion and I'm going to make a burrito out of my silk. So I'm just going to take and roll it up like a big burrito. My Morden is going to be vinegar and steel. If we're use, going to use steel wire and we're going to wrap this together and we're going to stick it in uh, vinegar. We want to make sure everything is tucked in, but I'm for the, because we want to get this done. <laughs> I'm kind of quickly doing it. So the first time you're, you're working with dyes, you get to do it without a hot bath. You're just going to use um, the dye material. And I've got the, my big burrito now, and I'm going to wrap my burrito with um, steel, steel wire. And I have copper wire too, um, steel or copper. Now it's very important. We're gonna add the vinegar and we're gonna just do straight vinegar, not a vinegar, water, because we're not boiling. We're going to put our, check and make sure everybody can hear me. Everyone hearing me still? Yes. <laughs> yes, they look like, okay. All right, so that's what it looks like. The only thing we're not sending home with you is vinegar, but everything else we'll send home with you. You just have to uh, visit the library. You can put it in a jar if you want, or you can just put it 
like this and then go put it in your garage or somewhere for two weeks. And then after two weeks, go outside, empty your bag and all of your plant material. You rinse your um, scarf. And this is what red onions and sumac looks like. It's a beautiful shades of gray. If you, I don't know if you can see this, but I waited three weeks and there's little tiny holes. Can you see the tiny holes? Probably not, because it's pretty, um, there are some tiny holes and that's because I left it too long. If you leave it over two weeks, there is a chance that the steel is going to start eating through your fabric. So for this scarf, it's it ate through the fabric because I did it too long. So two weeks is all you need. So you're gonna take and you're gonna put this, let's see the color's already starting to um, turn. And uh, so two weeks um, is uh, this dye process. So the directions for using it this way is in a book, which I'll, somewhere on this table. <laughs> um, this is the um, cold one. It's, it, it's, I mean, the first time around I would do it this way, but I think the hot one is a, a much better, more economical way of dying. So um, this is a good way. So I'm gonna put this in the sink right now because I have to double bag it. Okay. And then I'll come back and I've created a mess here, but that's okay. Thanks, Jess, for helping me. Uh, so I'm going to um, share my screen uh, again and my keynote. missing. Sorry, everyone. I'm having a little technical difficulty on my side. There. Okay. All right. So I'm going to open up my keynote. Sorry about that, everyone. It, it's opening now. All right. use this one. Maybe not. Can we open it? I got it. All right, so I'm just going to review um, dyeing the silk scarf, what I just did. Um, oh, I'm not sharing. Let me share this. Hold on. Zoom anymore. I'm out of Zoom. You're here. We see you. You see me. Oh. Jess, I might have to walk over to your computer because mine has kind of my Zoom is frozen. And yeah. yeah. Oh, here it came back. No, that's me. It's you. Mm -hmm. Oh. Good. Hey, thanks. All right. Uh, um, I'm going to go to the next you want me to go to the next, next slide. Yeah. Thanks, Jess. Okay. So what I just did is um, just a quick dye um, without doing a uh, hot water bath. It was I used steel wire, which will react to the um, vinegar. You could use copper or brass. Um, I use two different materials. I use sumac and red, um, our red onion. Um, I used a plastic bag and, uh, or you can use just a jar. I'm gonna leave it in for no more than 14 days. I'm gonna unwrap it outside and kind of shake it out and, and then um, just give it a rinse. And um, you will have a beautiful, um, scarf. Now, there are two websites you might want to use. One is um, 
pioneer thinking, which um, goes through, if you want to click on that, Jess, it's going to go through all of the different materials and what colors um, that are, um, no, I'm not seeing it yet. No. There it is. So um, if you want to scroll down, Jess. Uh, so this is a great website for looking at um, uh, materials and getting your dye bath ready. Um, I saw lots of berries outside. They would be fun to pick and use. Uh, again, use, it goes through, go down to the bottom of the page. So here it's shades of orange. If you're looking for orange, um, here are all different things you can use for orange. I saw at the dollar store, they had t-shirts for a dollar. They would be fun to um, make different kind of natural colors. Uh, so here are all the different shades. I thought this was a good uh, website for finding different colors. There's the onion skins and then the mordant. So depending on what mordant, um, turmeric is also a fun one to do. So um, if we'll go back to the, um, the mm -hmm. other page, our keynote. So um, where do you get all these materials for dyeing? There's a company out in California called Dharma Trading Company. And I was able to purchase um, the silk scarfs from there. So um, I used a larger one, they're around $3, um, but the ones that I'm gonna be sending home with you are a bit smaller. You can take a couple if you want. And I think these were, so up where it says scarves is where you can get all of your scarves. And so there are the silk and, and cotton scarves. And so if you're really into this, this is um, a great website for ordering. Uh, and they also have tutorials on ordering, um, uh, uh, tutorials on making dyes and things like that. So um, this is a great website um, to go to. So if we can go back to the keynote, Jess. Yep. All right, next, next page. All right, so if, um, I, I hope you enjoyed this. This is something I, I enjoy doing. Um, it's pretty, you can use lots of different materials um, if you have that are on hand. Um, it's you need vinegar or just water, as with the avocado, the pits and skins. So come to the library here in Ake Harbor, and we'll give you all the materials you need to take home and do your first uh, dye project. The first dye project will be not a hot bath one; it'll be just a a cold bath of vinegar. Uh, with some plant materials and your silk. Any questions out there? We have two chats there. Um, Let's. I think we didn't have audio. Okay. I'll check Facebook. Yeah. Any questions? Um, you you want to unmute the, the the group? They they can unmute themselves. Okay, you can unmute yourselves if you want to ask have, any questions. We have a question. Can we do string instead of steel or copper? Sure. You got to repeat it because I don't have my audio on. Um, uh, the question was, can you use string? Yes, you can use string. And how do you mix the mortem, uh, mordant alum? You just, um, it, it's a powder, you add it to the water. I don't use it, I use vinegar, um, but you just add it to the water. Uh, that one video, she just added scoops. She has the measurements. The books here that I have in the library all have the different measurements, how much you need with water, how much vinegar you need with water, how much um, alum you need with water. And again, you can just experiment without any mordant, uh, uh, especially with red cabbage and, um, uh, oh, beets. Oh my gosh, beets are fantastic. So um, yeah, anything that's gone bad, you can use in a dye bath. All right, we have eight chats. Are they all from um, no we sound? Borrow books if we are not um, Door County residents. Oh, sure. We can get you a library card. 
Yes, that's no problem. No problem. And uh, all your libraries have these same books. We can do a book list for you uh, and have it out there for you, two of the ones that I've selected. Somebody says that they used alum and it's allium and it's very easy to do. Okay. Oh, someone else has done it. Someone has used alum and they said it's very easy to do. Anyone have tips for us that they want to share? Again, I'm not an expert. I've just taken a couple of classes and I've done classes. I'm just sharing something that I enjoy doing and it's easy to do with all the materials outside. I wish we had an in-person workshop because we had a really good time last year when we made our scarves. Um, so uh, any more, we have, no? Okay, well, thanks everyone for joining us today uh, for our, our, our session on natural dyes and uh, come visit us at the library and pick up your materials. We have lots of onion skins. I don't know if you can see all the bags, bags of onion skins, lots of silk, all the materials you need, and of course, lots of books for this project. Thanks again. It's Janine from Egg Harbor Library with Jess Ranke, our building manager, and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, my